lifetime in repeat. Hey there. Um, so today we're going to talk about how to use Unity to build a uh, insult generation app. Um, so let's get started. Um, first thing I like to do whenever I'm building a new project is just make like a little reference to myself about exactly how the project's going to look. So it's going to be an insult generation app. So we just want to have essentially one screen where, I'm just going to draw that out, um, one screen where the user uh, will see when they load up the app. And then once they do that, um, we'll have some text at the top that gives kind of the title of the app. So we'll call this title text. Um, we'll have a pretty large body of text that is going to give them the insult. So we'll call this insult text. And then uh, we'll have a button at the bottom that every time they push it will generate a new insult. So we'll call this insult button. Insult button. Um, okay, so we're going to use Unity to do this. This isn't Unity isn't necessarily the best program to use for something like this, since Unity has a bunch of features that we're not even going to come close to touching. But um, what I would like to do is just kind of use this as an opportunity to teach general computer science concepts and uh, C sharp in general. Um, and so Unity is perfectly fine for that, especially since I'm going to continue making tutorials on specifically making games in Unity. So as far as what Unity is, uh, if you didn't already know, so if you go to this website, unity3d.com, uh, this is what you'll see. Unity is a um, mostly free to use uh, video game engine that you can use to build 2D and 3D games. Um, there's a lot of games that have been built with it, um, and I think it's very accessible, and the fact that it's accessible makes it uh, one of the better engines to use right now. You can disagree with me, that's fine. So anyway, if you go to unity3d.com, you can click on this button for Get Unity. Um, and then there's a few different versions of Unity that you can use. First, there's the personal version, which is free, um, and you're allowed to use the personal version and export to Android, iOS, Windows and Mac PC, video game consoles, all kinds of stuff, so long as you make less than $100,000 um, from your game per year. If you make more than $100,000 per year, then you need to upgrade to Plus. And for last month, Unity was doing this whole special deal with Plus that you'd get a bunch more software too. It's a monthly subscription, 35 bucks per month. Um, Pro has some extra features um, that even Plus doesn't have, and that's, I wanna say, yep, 125 per month. And then for Enterprise, I mean, that's if you're, like, I don't know, you have a ton of people who are working at once. But for people who are just working by themselves and haven't really made anything yet, personal is perfectly fine. So click on personal, download the installer. We're going to be using Unity 5.6.1, which as of today is the most current uh, version of Unity. All right, so when you open Unity, you're going to be brought to uh, this menu here that allows you to either access one of your previous projects or create a new one. So we're going to create a new project. Uh, I'm going to put this in 2D. We could put it in 3D, but since we're just dealing with menus, it doesn't matter. Uh, I don't need to use Unity Analytics. And I'm going to call this uh, Insult Generator. And I'm going to save it to my desktop. You can. I think by default, Unity saves into your Documents folder. I just like putting it on my desktop because then I can move it wherever I want to. Um, okay, so I'm going to create that project, and Unity is going to wait a few seconds while it compiles everything and gets everything ready for us to see. Uh, okay, so here's what Unity looks like. Yours probably doesn't look like mine, especially if you just downloaded it. Yours almost certainly looks like this. Um, this is the Unity's default view. You've got the hierarchy on the left, um, your project folders, and your console down here, and then your inspector on the right. Um, I'm not a huge fan of using it this way. I prefer to use the uh, two by three layout. So to change that, you can just go up here in the corner and choose whichever layout you want. There's more, like you can choose four split. Uh, you can choose tall. 
you can choose wide. Personally, I like the two by three because it allows you to see um, the scene that you're working on and how that would look as a game at the same time. So I kind of like that because um, if you make changes up here, you can see exactly what they would look like using your camera right away. If you're using the default layout, then any changes you make to your scene, if you want to see how they look in the game, you have to click over to game and then back over to scene to make changes. Whereas in 2x3, changes that you make um, in the scene view will be reflected immediately in the game view. So that's just a preference I have. You can have a completely different preference, that's fine. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create um, some aspects of the UI. Well, actually, before we even do that, let's fix our display down here. So right now this display is free aspect, and that means that it's going to automatically resize. See how the camera is resizing up there too? To whatever uh, amount of space I give it on my screen. So this uh, white box up here represents what the camera can see. And so as I freely resize this, that white box changes because it's going to render different parts for the camera. I want to have this be more controlled. So I'm going to go down here to my game view. And if you're in default, you would click over to the game panel and then look at the game view. I'm going to change this from free aspect to, uh, I've already created a couple little templates down here, but I'll show you how to create one. So I want to use it as a phone that's in portrait mode. So to do that, I'm going to go down here and hit plus. My label is going to be portrait mode phone. And you want to change the type from fixed resolution to aspect ratio. Fixed resolution is how many pixels are available on the screen. 10 pixels by 10 pixels would be super small. Um, I want an aspect ratio so that I can have it dynamically change depending on how many pixels are on screen. So I want its width to be 9 and the height to be 16. This is pretty average for phones nowadays. 9 by 16, it's widescreen. So we want our width to be 9, our height to be 16. I'll click OK. And then you can see that my camera automatically resized. And now my camera is going to essentially stay. It's going to have the same proportion. It's not going to change its proportion like it was earlier. Um, OK. So another thing I kind of like to do every time I boot up a Unity scene is I hate this blue background. I can't stand it. So I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to, oh, probably going too fast. So I'm going to open up my scene, which right now is called Entitled. I'm going to click on my main camera, and that brings up a lot of stuff in the inspector. So in the inspector, uh, we've got Transform, which is the position in the scene. Camera, which is um, anything to do with the camera itself. Um, GUI layer, flare layer, and an audio listener, if we want to add sounds to this later. So I'm just going to go to the camera um, aspect. And I'm going to click on where it says background and change this to just a plain old white because I think that's going to look better. Um, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, an image to this. So uh, to create a new game object, there's a few different ways you can do that. You can click the create button up here. We can go to UI and create an image. Or you can right click in this hierarchy area, create an UI image. Or you can go up here to the top and click game object UI image. If you're using Windows, it's exactly the same. You just don't have the, you have a different kind of bar down here than I do. But um, the steps are exactly the same if you're using Windows. And the menus at the top should look the same. Unity is a pretty, uh, uh, concurrent experience between both Windows and Mac. All right, so I'm going to go to the UI. I'm going to create a new image. All right, now you can't really see that image. Oh, yeah, OK. And this, too. So how you zoom out in Unity. So if you have a mouse handy, you can just use the scroll wheel like that. Um, or if you are on a laptop and you don't have a scroll wheel handy, if you hold down Alt and right click, uh, you'll see your cursor turns into that magnifying glass. If you go up, it zooms out. If you go down, it zooms in. So that's one way that you can zoom out if you're using a laptop. Also, what you can do is you can highlight an image and press uh, uh, double-click it. 
and uh, it will resize so that you're viewing that image mostly. Okay, so I'm going to do a few things here. First, I'm going to make sure the image is highlighted. Over in the inspector, I'm going to take a look at what I have. I have its rect transform, which is its position in the screen. Um, and this has something called anchors, which we're going to talk about in mere moments. We've got a canvas renderer, and then we've got an image, which is what the image is actually being shown on the screen. Um, I'm going to change its color here so that I can see it against that white background. So as you see it right now, it's a little more than half, uh, halfway left and right, and it's about a third up and down. Um, if I hit play, and you'll see down here, after it's done beach balling, uh, you'll see down here, nothing's changed. It's halfway, and then about a third. If I maximize this though, to maximize, you go to game, right click, and maximize. Holy cow, it's in a completely, not only is it in a completely different spot, it's not in the lower corner, it's also not the right size. So um, what's going on here is uh, Unity is using this thing called the anchor system. So the anchors are these things in the center. Um, it's going to position this object based on how far away from these anchors it is. So right now, it's that many pixels away in this direction and that many pixels over from the center of the anchor in that direction. So if I maximize it, um, since the anchors are in the center, then it's going to stay that many pixels down from the center of the screen and that many pixels over from the center of the screen. So this looks like it's about a third of the way up and this looks like it's a little more than half over. Well, it's more than a third. Um, but it kind of essentially took this over. And because the anchors are in the center, it did that to every side of it, leaving the object the same size, even though the screen is much larger. So there's a few ways that we can fix this. Uh, first, depending on how you want that object to look. So you can go over here to your Rect Transform, uh, where it says Custom. And you can go to the lower right to make the anchors resize to the top, bottom, left, and right of the screen. Um, now, if I hit play, <clears throat> again, nothing changes in this version. It's going to look exactly the same because that's the size screen that we were using. But if I maximize it, holy cow, that is super not the right size that we wanted. So how we fix that um, is we want, this is just how I fix it. And I mean, other people do it different ways. I'm going to grab these anchors and I'm going to resize them so that they're the same size as the box itself. So what that means is it's going to force the image to take up this much of the screen um, proportionally rather than based on how many pixels it has. So if I hit play again, again, nothing changes in this view. But if I right click and choose maximize, and there we go. It's about the right size I wanted. Uh, okay. So that's kind of how the anchor system works. In general, I like to put the anchors where I want something to be. Other people do it differently. Um, so whether or not I'm doing it right or if there's a better way to do it, I'm sure that there is. Uh, okay, anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this uh, up here. And I'm going to make it kind of short and squat. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is I'm making a background for my title text of the app. Now, one thing you'll notice, uh, if I have it set to the resize tool, where I've got these blue circles on the four corners, if I move it around, I can easily find where the center of the screen is. See how that kind of orange line pops up? That's the center of the screen. I do the same thing um, top to bottom, and there would be perfectly centered. So I'm going to center it and then put it just a little bit away from the top of the screen. I'm going to also move these anchors to be at the edges of the box. Be careful when you're moving the anchors, especially when they're on here like this, because if you go close to it, you see how that little circly thing popped up down there? If you try to resize it now, it thinks you want to rotate it. So just be careful about that. Uh, okay, I'm also going to change color. I'm like, I kind of like this blue. I'm just going to make it a little bit transparent. 
If you guys don't know, um, the way that color works on here is you've got a red channel, a green channel, a blue channel, and then an alpha channel. The alpha channel is how transparent something is. So I'm just going to make it about there. Um, then I'm going to call this my intro text background and hit enter. If you don't hit enter, it doesn't save your uh, text changes. Um, okay, and now I'm going to create an object that's going to be a child of my text background, meaning it's going to be a part of my text background. So to do that, I'm going to highlight intro text and either hit create game object or right click it, go down to UI and choose text. And it's thinking, there we go. Uh, if you want to be able to move your canvas around, if you right click and hold in 2D mode, you can do this. Um, or use your center mouse button and hold, you can do this. In 3D mode, right clicking rotates the camera. So you might want to get in the habit of using your center mouse button if you want to do stuff in 3D. All right, I'm going to resize this text to fit its background. I'm also going to bring its anchors to the edges of it so that the anchors match the text itself. Okay, and then going to center this and center it. I'm going to change the text to insult generator. Um, I'm going to make this best fit. Best fit just means it's going to choose a uh, size between for the text between 10 and 40 that fits this box best without having um, an overflow. I'm also going to change the color of the text. Unity by default does this kind of weird gray color. Uh, I like my text to be generally straight black or straight white. So in this case, I'm going to make it straight black. Um, okay, cool. So there is that. And I'll just call this intro text. It's a good idea to get in the habit of naming all of your game objects because it's going to save you from uh, being confused about which object is which object. Okay. So now, um, parenting and childing. So right now, the intro text background is here. And if I window shade it right next to it, let me just move this really quickly. If I window shade it by clicking this little triangle next to it, I can see that intro text is a part of that. What that means is it's a child of the intro text background. So if I move the intro text background around, because the other one is a child of it, it goes wherever the background goes. Um, so if you want objects to act together, um, you need to be thinking about parenting them somehow, one object being the parent of the other. Um, okay, so I'm also going to create some more text, and actually, I'm just going to uh, duplicate this. So to duplicate it, I'm going to right-click and hit D, or duplicate, uh, or if you're on a Windows, you can do Control-D. If you're on a Mac, you can do Command-D. So I'm just going to duplicate this. And then I'm going to move this down. This is going to be our insult text. I'm going to have this take up most of the screen. So I'll resize it like this. And don't worry about the fact that this has insult generator written twice. Um, we're going to change it programmatically so that when this comes up, that insult generator text that's in here goes away. All right, so I'm going to change this to Insult text background, and then inside this is going to be the insult text. All right, cool. Um, and then I made sure to move my anchors as well. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a button to the bottom of our scene here that allows us to um, generate the random insults. So on my canvas, I'm going to right click because I want it to be a child of the canvas, go to UI, and I want to create a new button. It creates the button kind of in the middle of the screen. I'm going to move it down. Uh, I'm also going to move the anchors so that this stays where I want it to. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to change this to insult button. It for me, you want to get in the habit of renaming these things because if you don't, you're going to have like 10 objects in your scene 
all with the same name and you don't know which is which and you have to kind of go through each of them. If you just get in the habit of doing it now, um, it's going to be better. I'm going to change the text on this to insult me, exclamation point. I'm going to centered and I'm going to make it best fit. Uh, I'm also going to change the color so it's black. All right, cool. Um, now, uh, first thing I'm going to do, yeah, okay, cool. We're at making a script now. So um, over here in my projects folder, I've got my assets. And right now I don't have any folders or anything that is in here that isn't brought directly from Unity. So first thing I'm going to do is create um, a new C Sharp script. If this were a bigger project, I'd tell you to make a folder to put all your scripts in, but we're just going to be using one script, so it's not a big deal. I'm going to name this script controller. Um, okay, one thing really quickly here just to let you know, if let's say that you create your C-sharp script and then you forget to name it while it has this blue text up and you click away from it, it's best just to delete it and make a new one and make sure that you rename it before this text comes up because right now the name of the class or the script itself is new behavior script and then new behavior script. If you change this name without doing a few other things, uh, it won't work. So I'm just going to delete this really quickly. So we're just going to use um, one script and that's going to be called our controller. All right. So now I'm going to, cool. So a couple things up here. Um, whenever you load up a new script from Unity, it reloads, it, it loads with some kind of sample code built in. So at the top of the screen, you've got three using statements, system.collections, which is um, the general things that the C-sharp system can use, system.collections.generic, uh, which is a generic subsection of that, and then Unity Engine, which are things that Unity itself can do, like uh, physics and rigid body and sprite renderers and all kinds of stuff, images on screen. Uh, I'm gonna add one more to this which is the UI subsection, subsection of Unity Engine. So I'm going to do using Unity Engine dot, and then you see all this stuff comes up. So each of these is a subsection of the Unity Engine that you can call in order to access more methods. So the AI is here so that you can access um, pathfinding and um, artificial intelligence algorithms. Analytics is so that Unity can track uh, pieces of your game, Apple, assertions, audio, collections, crash reporter, diagnostics, events, all this stuff. Um, the one that we want to focus on right now is UI, which stands for user interface, which is the stuff that you see in, uh, on our screen right now, the text and the button uh, and the images. So we're going to do using Unity Engine.UI. Now let's create first a reference to our insult text. So I'm going to call this public text with a capital T and I'll just call this insult text and then you want to make sure that you're ending your line with a semicolon um, as far as the uh, computer is concerned it sees the entire script as like one sentence and every line as a thought inside that sentence and so by having the semicolon at the end of your line you're telling the computer I'm ending my thought um, so the first thing we're going to do is create public text insult text. I'm going to save this script and then I'm going to pop back to Unity. Uh, in Unity, I'm going to attach this script because right now the script just exists here, but it's not attached to anything in the world, so it's not going to actually work. Um, I'm going to attach this script to a new game object that's just going to be an empty game object. So in the hierarchy, I'm going to right click and create empty, or you could go to create create empty or game object create empty. I'm going to call this my uh, app manager, which is just going to be an object that's in the world that manages how things are. So right now, if I click on it, it exists, believe it or not, right there. Um, it's at this one point in space, 40 on X, 90 on Y, 0 on Z. I can move it around and you can see how its position is changing. So, but if I click away from it, I can't actually find it in the scene. I have to find it in the hierarchy. So one thing I can do to make that easier is if I highlight the app manager and go over here to um, its place on the inspector, and then next to its name, if 
I click on this uh, multicolored cube, I can give it an icon in the scene. And now, even if I zoom way out, I can still click directly on the app manager in the scene. So, however, um, even if I put it here, so it's like in the middle of where the UI is, you won't see it on the game. It's only something that you can see from the editor, which is kind of nice. So I'm going to add my controller to the app manager. I'm just going to uh, just drag it right on. Now, a couple things here. You'll see insult text, and then there's a none because it doesn't know what the insult text is yet. So if I go down here, uh, back to Mono Develop, I want to talk just a little bit about this. So by calling it public, you're saying it's a variable that you want to set in the editor. So you want to tell it, like you're essentially creating an empty container for some text, but there's nothing in that container yet. You just created a container for it. The script doesn't know what's in there. So if you make it public, then you can decide what goes in the container from the editor, from Unity itself. If I make it private, then I'm going to save this again, hop back to Unity. Then you'll see that that place for the text is going to go away. You can tell Unity's compiling in this little um, circle thing is going in the lower right. And now it's not here anymore because it's not something, it's not a container I can fill from the editor. It's a container that can only be filled from a script. Um, also, if you don't leave out a description at all and you just call it text, insult text, and save this, pop back into Unity, it's going to default to private, which means that I won't see that. I want to um, make this public because I want to be able to assign what the insult text is from the editor. So I'm going to call this public again. All right. Next thing I need to do is actually create uh, my insult. So I'm going to create a public, meaning I can change it from the editor, string. Um, and then I want there to be more than one of these. So I'm only going to use five insults. You can come up with a bunch more if you want to. I'm going to keep it pretty PG though. Uh, public string, and then I want to make an array out of this. An array is where you have more than one thing or more than one variable. Uh, and my to create an array, you're going to use these square brackets. Uh, you can find those above your return button if you're looking for them. And I'm going to call this insults. Uh, okay, so if I save this and pop back into Unity, and you can see that uh, after it's done thinking down here. So I have insult text, which I haven't assigned yet, and I also have insults. Right now, the size of the array is zero. So let's deal with these one at a time. So the insult text. So I'm going to go over here, find my insult text from my scene, uh, and then I'm just going to click and drag this onto there. The other thing you could use is the circle selector, which is right next to it. It looks kind of like a nipple. Um, if you click on that, then you have uh, the text that is possible for you to use from your scene. Or you can click over to the assets and find text that's in your assets folder. So I could also select it that way. If Because like what can happen sometimes is you can, when you're clicking and dragging, you might just click that and then your script goes away. So some of you might think it's easier to use the circle selector. Uh, okay, and for my insults, I'm going to create five of them. So I'm going to click the triangle here, open up my array. Size is five. Uh, if you'll notice in computer science, whenever you start counting things, you always start at zero, which means that something of size five ends at four, which is really weird for some people to wrap their head around at first. But zero through four, believe it or not, is five elements. A lot of people have trouble understanding that at first. Uh, okay, so I'm going to take my insults here, which I got from a, a website for uh, PG rated insults. So you can make different ones if you want to. Uh, so the first one is going to be, since the last time I saw you, you reached rock bottom and started digging. <laughs> okay, the next one is, you will go far. The sooner you start, the better. Uh, the next one is going to be, not as stupid as you look, you couldn't be. Uh, let's see the fourth one. 
is going to be you, sir, or madam. Oops, not sick, sir. <laughs> it's not a grammar error. Uh, you, sir, or madam, uh, are an oxygen thief. And then the last one. Your mother was a hamster. And your father smells of elderberries. Monty Python fans, you'll, you'll get that one. Um, okay, cool. So these are our insults here. Um, now, I'm going to pop back into the script, and I'm going to do some stuff with those insults. So Unity has these... Oh, yeah, one thing I should describe, too, is you'll notice that I used a lowercase letter here and here, but then I used an uppercase letter when I actually named the script. And there's a reason for that. In computer science in general, um, when you're making a variable or a reference to another object, you want it to start with a lowercase letter, and then any words that you add to the description of that variable or reference um, should all begin with an uppercase letter so it's easy to read. But if it's a variable or a reference, meaning something that can change, then you want to start with a, a lowercase letter. If it's a script or a method, which is what these are, so the script is essentially like something that contains a bunch of different things that do stuff to an object, and then each of the things inside the script are things that will do stuff to it. So it's kind of like sentences within a paragraph, if you think of it in an English way. Um, methods and scripts begin with uppercase letters to denote them from one another, to keep them kind of different. Um, okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is in the start method, when we first um, start up our project, the start method is called before you see anything on the screen. Um, so in the start method, I'm going to take that insult text, insult text, and I'm going to take the text object on it, dot text, I'm going to set that equal to nothing. So open close quotations. Now, how I got this part right here. So let's save this really quickly. Jump back into Unity, and I'll explain. So if we look at the insult text object, and I was kind of showing it to you earlier when I created it, we have a lot of different parts of it. We have its rect transform. We have its canvas renderer, which is what makes it visible on the canvas. And we have its text. And then we have its default UI material. If I want to access anything that's in this text section, I need to call the object itself, which is insult text, and then dot whichever one of these I want to reference from there. I want it to reference the text, um, which is this part right here. Um, and I just am going to set that text to be nothing, which is why I did insult text dot text equals open close parentheses. So then back in here, if I hit play now, before you see anything, after it's done beach balling, um, it just changes the text to be nothing, right there, before you see anything on the screen. All right, cool. So let's make a new method here. And this method is going to be how we see our insults. So I'm going to call this uh, public void. And I want it to be public so that I can access it from the editor. And this is going to be um, public void uh, get insult. Open close parentheses. And then open the curly brace, enter twice, and close that curly brace. So the open close parentheses are here um, if you want to pass something into this from another place. I don't want to do that right now. Um, and that's kind of complicated. It takes a little while for students to understand exactly what passing variables in means. But uh, right now, a void just means it's going to, instead of returning an element, instead of giving back an integer or something, it's going to um, just do something. And then when it's, once it's done doing the thing it's supposed to do, it's going to stop and be done. Um, OK, so in here, I'm going to create some pseudocode and kind of explain where all of this comes from. So first, uh, oh yeah, to make comments, you start with these two slashes. So I'm just going to, whatever comes after those two slashes, the program won't access. It's just for you to see and then not for anybody else to see. So first thing I'm going to do is find a random number. Then I'm going to get the 
insult that relates to that number. And then finally, I'm going to display that insult. So these are the three things we're going to do in this method. So first, finding a random number. Unity has a uh, way to uh, find what a random number is. So I'm going to create an integer. And an integer, if you forgot your algebra lessons, <laughs> is a number that can be positive or negative. Uh, no decimals, no fractions. That's what an integer is. Positive or negative, no decimals, no fractions. So I just want to get like 1, 2, 3, a billion, 37. Um, there's a limit to how big integers can go in computer science, and I want to say it's 256 million, but I could be wrong. Um, anyway, so the random number I want to get, I'm going to create an integer, and I'm going to call it uh, insults to display. And again, I'm starting with a lowercase letter because this is a variable, something that can change. I'm going to set that insult to display equal to random dot. Once I hit dot, it tells me different things I could use. So I could do, and then also in Mono Devolve, it kind of tells you. I could generate a color HSV. I could generate equals object A or object B. Uh, in it states all these different things. Uh, what I want to do is range. And range, I have to tell it a minimum and a maximum. And then it will return a random integer between the minimum inclusive and the maximum exclusive. So what that means is if I put in like 0 through 10, 0 is my min, 10 is my max, it will never play, it will never show 10, but it will show 0 because it includes the lower one, but excludes doesn't have the upper one. So it goes every integer up to but not including the last one, but including the first one. So I'm going to do random.range and my lower number is going to be 0 because I told you earlier that's what arrays start with. And then my upper number um, is going to be however many insults I have. So to call how many insults I have, I'm going to do insults dot. And then here's all the things I can do to the insults. Uh, I want to find out how long the insults are. So I'm going to do insult.length. And this is something that just gets a value. So insults.length. OK, so insult to display is going to be a random number from 0 to however many insults there are. Um, and then I'm going to do string. A string, I didn't describe this up here, I'm sorry. So a string is just a bunch of alphanumeric characters. Um, letters or numbers, they're encapsulated inside these quotation marks. Um, yeah, pretty much anything that you can type on keyboard is a string, so long as you keep it inside quotation marks. And then the computer doesn't know what to do with that until you force it to look for something inside the string. It just kind of considers the string as just this block of stuff that it moves around. So I'm going to do string um, insult displayed is equal to, and I want it to be the insult that we just picked out of the insults array. So I'm going to do insults, and then inside these square brackets, I'm going to pass in the value of the integer we just chose. So insult to display. And then the last thing I want to do is display the insult. And so I'm going to do my insult text dot text is equal to uh, open close parentheses or not parentheses, quotations plus uh, insult displayed. So what we did here is we uh, picked an integer randomly from zero to however many insults we have. And the reason we did it this way is maybe later I want to add like 10 more insults. I don't want to have to remember to come back into the code and change this number. I could have just put five here and then it would have done zero, one, two, three, or four. Um, but if I change the insults in the editor later by doing it this way, the code will automatically adapt to that without me having to remember to come back in and change that number. Uh, otherwise, I'd be like, well, why is it only showing me the same five insults? That doesn't make any sense. I added a bunch more. So by having this here, the program automatically adapts. And then we're going to store that inside of a new string. 
which is a bunch of alphanumeric characters. And the one we're going to store is of the insults array. And the uh, one in the insults array we're going to do is insult to display. Then we're going to change the text to be uh, an empty string plus the insult that we're displaying. So I'm going to save this, go back into Unity. All right, so nothing is going to do anything yet because we have to add that function to the button in the scene because right now the button doesn't do anything. If I hit play, this will go away because I told it to. Uh, once it's done beach balling, this will go away because I told it to, but if I hit this insult button, it doesn't do anything because I didn't hook anything up to it. So let's hook something up to it. So I'm going to grab my insult button and I'm going to go down. Again, here are the different things that the insult button can do. It's position in the scene, uh, its ability to be seen, uh, the image that's behind it, which is this kind of rounded image, uh, and then the button script, which controls all the button objects, or all of the stuff about the button. So I can have, I can change its normal color if I want to, I can make it, you know, whatever color I want. Mm, go nuts. I'm just going to leave it white. Um, I can change the color when it's highlighted, which is the color it has when you mouse over it, and then the color it has when it's pressed. I can change any of these colors. So I can make it so that it's like it's red at normal. Uh, when I highlight it, when I hover over it, it's this weird blue. And then I can make it so that when I press it, it's let's go purple. And then if I hit play, when it's done beach balling. So as normal, it's red. If I hover over it, it turns blue. And then if I press it, it turns purple. That is really annoying. Um, I'm just going to turn all these back to what they were. You can do whatever you want. Just make that a gray, and then make this a darker gray. OK, cool. So um, on click down here is what happens when you click the button. So I'm going to add something to it. And I'm going to grab, so it, it needs to have an object from the scene that we're clicking from. So I can either grab the app manager and pull it in here, or I can use the circle selector and choose the app manager. And then uh, the function I want to use from the app manager. So I can do stuff from its game object, stuff from its transform, its position in the scene, or from the controller script. So from the controller script, I want to do get insult. And you'll notice this change from being a reference to the object itself to being a reference to the script that's attached to the object. So now, if I hit play, so text goes away. If I click Insult Me, I only have five, so it's sometimes you see the same insult twice. But there you go. There's a little uh, insult generator. Um, cool. So that was kind of an introduction to some computer science concepts and to Unity itself. Um, please feel free to like the video or leave a comment if you have any questions. I will answer them. Uh, if you didn't like the video, feel free to dislike it. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Uh, otherwise, have a wonderful day.